In this paper, we outline the process of building an ontology of dark patterns, based on our efforts connecting expertise in design, computer science, and law. The goal of this ontology is to connect regulators, policymakers, and scholars. Dark patterns describe instances where design choices subvert, impair, or distort the ability of a user to make an autonomous and informed choice in relation to digital systems, regardless of the designer's intent. This concept, sometimes known by other names such as deceptive design, is increasingly popular in uniting scholars, regulators, and designers in transdisciplinary dialogue to identify problematic practices and find ways to prevent or discourage the use of these patterns. This paper builds upon a first draft of an ontology we published as a late-breaking work at CHI 2023. In this full paper, we have extended and finalized the core ontology elements, created a syntax for dark patterns definitions, and proposed a set of definitions for the 65 dark patterns included in the ontology. Our method for developing this ontology included five key stages, moving from early aggregation of dark patterns types to clustering and creating new informational structures, culminating in a new three-level structure. In the first stage, aggregation, we evaluated 10 different sources, encompassing 203 low-level patterns and 59 high-level patterns. The academic literature has grown rapidly since Brignall released his original typology in 2010. In the years since, foundational work by Bosch, Gray, Matur, and Liguri and Strahilovitz have added many new dark patterns types. These typologies have had some alignment, while also seeking to expand descriptions of the many contexts in which dark patterns occur. We selected these sources since all had been cited in regulatory reports, and all of these sources had been frequently cited in academic literature as well. Regulators and policymakers have also shown interest in contributing to this space, with five reports from the EU, UK, and US bodies published in 2022. These sources represent interest from perspectives including consumer protection and data protection, with both broad coverage of digital services and attention to specific services, such as social media. In our analysis, we found that these sources often lacked citation provenance trails for typologies and definitions, making it difficult to trace where new or specific types of patterns emerged and under which conditions. In the second stage, we traced the provenance of each pattern to identify when it was first mentioned in the literature and how pattern names had evolved over time. As one example of establishing these provenance trails, we can evaluate the pattern hidden information. In our ontology, hidden information subverts the user's expectation that relevant information will be made accessible and visible, instead disguising relevant information or framing it as irrelevant. After Gray 2018's original use of this pattern name, we found direct instances of the same pattern in the FTC and OECD reports. Additionally, we found that other elements of patterns in the literature could be used to infer addressing the same pattern such as Bosch's hidden legalese st stipulations, or Liguri and Strahilovitz's combination of hidden information and aesthetic manipulation. The final ontology includes these direct and inferred mappings, including identification of the original source of each pattern. In the third stage, we clustered these patterns in conjunction with our provenance analysis to identify how the patterns could be best organized, keeping in mind both clarity and levels of pattern knowledge. We started our analysis with 245 patterns from five academic and five regulatory sources and iteratively clustered them as a research team by identifying direct citations, identical language, or inferred similarity. As shown in this Miro board where we created the clusters, each source was included with a different color and we iteratively used proximity to identify overlaps, potentially new labels for groups of patterns, and new structural patterns that existed across or between pattern types. In the fourth stage, we created meso-level patterns that joined together low-level patterns that already existed in the literature and established high-level strategies. In the ontology, we propose three levels of pattern granularity. High-level patterns are general strategies, whereas low-level patterns describe a specific means of execution. In between these spaces, our new meso-level patterns describe an angle of attack. Both high- and meso-level patterns can be applied to multiple contexts and domains. In contrast, low-level patterns are domain and context-specific. Through our evaluation of existing patterns, we found multiple instances where high- and low-level patterns could be united through the creation of a new meso-level pattern. For instance, the high-level pattern of sneaking and low-level implementations of sneaking, such as sneak into basket, could be linked at a meso-level of abstraction through the pattern hiding information. 
As another example of these relationships, a high-level strategy such as interface interference might be used as an angle of attack through manipulation of the choice architecture, which is executed in the interface through false hierarchy. In the final stage, we finalize the mappings, resulting in 65 total patterns in the ontology. In the final ontology, we identify which regulatory and academic sources include each pattern type and organize patterns across these three levels of hierarchy. Some pattern names are inferred, while others share the same explicit vocabulary. Many of these patterns have been included in one or more taxonomies, but often with citation, without citation, and some were present in a single taxonomy, but usefully extended the state of the art. In all, our ontology includes five high-level patterns, 25 meso-level patterns, and 34 low-level patterns. In extending our work from CHI 2023, we also wanted to engage with the question, how do we define these patterns? As part of our process, we use the structure to consider what form and syntax definitions differing levels might take. At the high level, we included components that addressed the undesired action and how it distorted, subverted, or otherwise limited users' autonomy, decision-making, or free choice. As one example of this, interface interference privileges certain actions over others through the manipulation of the user interface, thereby confusing the user or limiting discoverability of relevant action possibilities. At the meso level, we included components that addressed the user's expectation and the relationship of that expectation to a different final effect. Some patterns pointed more towards static moments in the user journey, while others described temporal effects that might be realized over a longer portion of the user's journey. As an example, manipulating the visual choice architecture subverts the user's expectation that the options presented will support their desired goal. Instead, including an order or a structure of options that makes another outcome more likely. At the low level, we included components that relate to one or more specific elements of the user interface, interpreting the incorrect user expectation in relation to the undesired effect on the user. At the low level, definitions describe the specific user interactions that are limited, a coordinated set of user interactions that produce the desired effect, discrete UI elements, or a user's comprehension of the interface. The example of price comparison prevention includes the higher level strategies of creating barriers and obstruction excluding relevant information, limiting the ability of a user to copy-paste, or otherwise inhibiting a user from comparing price across two or more vendors. As a result, the user cannot make an informed decision about where to buy a product or service. Why does this ontology matter? We hope it will allow social scientists, legal scholars, regulators, and other stakeholders to operate from a shared vocabulary, enabling more alignment in user studies, sanctions, and discussions of harm. This shared vocabulary and hierarchy of patterns will also help us trace the presence and types of patterns over time. This will allow scholars and regulators to anticipate the presence of existing patterns in new contexts or domains and guide automated detection. For social scientists, the ontology will enable researchers to map impacts of dark patterns in a shared way with a shared vocabulary, reducing duplication and supporting unified knowledge building. For social scientists working with computer scientists, the ontology will enable the detection of dark patterns, recognizing which types might be more detectable and measurable based on their underlying definitions and characteristics. For social scientists working with regulators, the ontology will enable the commissioning of studies to better understand how dark patterns impact people, while also discouraging studies that address functionality that is already illegal. For social scientists working with legal scholars, the ontology will enable the consideration of harms, linking together areas of social science inquiry and potential legal remedies to address the harms or vulnerabilities that are discovered through research. And finally, for legal scholars working with regulators, the ontology will facilitate the consistent identification and characterization of dark patterns in enforcement cases, allowing the development of robust case law. This ontology will be regularly updated by the dark patterns research community and is available online. We acknowledge the support of the organizations that have funded this work, and we thank you for listening.